Hello guys, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. My name is Bolu. Uh, I'm sure today you're wondering why why isn't um, Emmanuel here? Well, uh, we are changing things up a little bit. So I'm done hosting today's um, podcast and today we are talking about something really interesting and we are talking about digitizing public transport. Um, if you live in Lagos and you use public transport, chances are that you've used um, the BRT buses and you've had to pay with a card called the Cowrie card. It's an NFC enabled card where you just you know tap to pay. Uh, today joining us on today's podcast are the um, founders of the company behind um, that payment system. Um, today we have the founders of Touch and Pay. Touch and Pay is the company um, behind that payment system. So today we have. Uh, let me let them introduce themselves. Oh, okay, my name is Alamidi Afalabi. Okay. And my name is Michael Oluwale. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. So today is going to be a very interesting one. Uh, we'll be talking a lot about um, how the old thing started, how it's going, and what to look forward to. But you know, talking about transportation, um, talking about things like this, um, let's let me just introduce you to our sponsor. Uh, sponsoring today's podcast is Whistle. Whistle. So, what does Whistle do? So, Whistle is an application that helps you make money by snitching on people. Yes, you snitch on people. You, as you know, in Lagos, um, there's usually um, people flaunt traffic laws. Let's be honest with ourselves. People do that a lot. So, what Whistle is doing is. You see, when you see someone flaunting a traffic a traffic rule, traffic law, um, running red lights, parking in the wrong place, or just, you know, causing a lot of wala on Lagos Road, all you have to do is take a picture and send to Whistle, and Whistle will pay you for doing that. Interesting, right? Yeah. Except I'm the one flaunting the traffic law, please. Don't report me. Hmm? Let's, we'll talk about it and I'll compensate you. But yes, that's what Whistle is doing now. Whistle is um, the sponsor of today's podcast. So um, let's dive right into um, today's podcast. And like I said, we're talking about digitizing transport, public transport in Nigeria. But our focus today will be more on um, Lagos. Yeah. So thank you very much, um, guys, for being on today's podcast. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So um, I'm sure a lot of people have. A lot of people have a lot of questions, and I hope that I ask you know a lot, a lot of the questions that they have um, for you guys. So um, before we you know dive into um, payments and how we are digitizing payments in the transport sector, let's talk about um, touch and pay. Um, well, I already spoke to you guys. Uh, I think sometime last year about you know what you guys are doing, how the whole thing started. But um, just for the sake of our podcast audience, um, just tell us about the company, um, what you guys do, how the whole thing started, and how it's going now. Oh, okay. Um, I will take it in part so that okay. Michael can also add <laughs> it. Right. So basically, um, our vision was to try to mop up cash. So Nigeria, for a while now, have been in this. Um, I don't know whether it's still a nightmare or a dream <laughs> of um, having a cashless society, um, but it has been really, really far from being achieved. So, and then when we extray the whole thing, we realize that the reason is because the common man or the small businesses are not digitized. Mm -hmm. So why we have the likes of Flutter with Paystack and everybody doing payments, you know, providing some form of digitization for people that, you know, have bank cards and all that. Um, the, the real people on the streets, I mean, don't have any form of accepting trans um, transactions. So an example is, um, if you take down for example, mm -hmm. and you say you want to pay with your POS or your ATM, <laughs> people are just going to look at you and say, ah, are you whining us? Beat you there, <laughs> <laughs> they beat you. And you know, these are like day-to-day -day encounters of people. Yeah. And if you still have to rely on cash there, um, I don't know where um, cashless is going to come from <laughs> <laughs> in reality. Yeah. So we took it upon ourselves and we identified several industries like this in Nigeria um, where we still have lots of reliance on cash. And then we said, if we don't digitize people at this point, then we cannot get financial inclusion. We cannot get digitization that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's like our vision in Touch and Pay. So we decided to start taking it from one sector to another. So we focus on transportation. So Mike, interesting. Yeah, interesting. I think the only thing I would probably add to it is to better paint the picture I was trying to explain. Okay. So you can imagine we here, um, me trying to make a transfer to you. Okay. Right. Vis-a-vis -vis the number of people that have paid for transport in Oshodi. 
in Aja, in Abu Ghraib. Wow. The number of conductors have collected cash. Mm. So if we say that um 70% of transactions in in this country is still cash based, it is from that perspective you understand it. So mm. that same person that's paying conductor will get down who wants to buy gala or lacasera or any snacks and is still going to do that with cash. So just better put um paint the picture in in depth is the big transactions who've so classified transactions into two so you're trying to buy a house you're trying to pay your rent you're yeah. trying to pay tuition you of course you transfer true but if you're leaving this place and you're going to board the uh, tricycle or you're going to board the public transport yeah you're you're not you're transfer. <laughs> <laughs> you have your atf card are you joking mm. so the real sense is that even we that we are financially included mm. We still have to go to the ATM to sure. withdraw cash to or actually POS agent. POS agents, which mm-hmm. they've now done. They've mm-hmm. just actually brought the POS agent closer to withdraw cash to still deal with this everyday merchants that we do. So microtransaction is actually the point where we need to digitize to actually achieve a cashless ecosystem. Interesting. So I think it's really interesting that you decided to do that to through transportation, yeah. which, yes. you know, I can only imagine the amount of <laughs> cash based <laughs> yeah. in Lagos alone. Absolutely. You know? And I think that's that's a very interesting one. So um since you started um you know with this um solution that you've brought, how has it evolved? What has what what were the things that have changed since the first time <laughs> you put it on till now? Yeah, we started with something really basic. Okay. Um, when we started, we were a bit lucky that um, COVID struck, you know, the state was trying to come out of a pandemic mm-hmm. and contact tracing was, I mean, one of the key things. So we were able to win the bid from that perspective, you know, data and all that. And one of the things that we, you know, had to focus on then was the fact that um, these have to be very simple mm-hmm. and very basic. Yeah. So all we just wanted to do was you know, provide data, contact data to, you know, the authorities, the regulators and the states, and also make the process of paying very seamless. But of course, so many things have happened after that, and we've really evolved beyond that. So we've gone to a point where we now have a data department that provide insights mm. to all the yes. transport operators and the merchants as well. Now they are they're able to compare their last week transactions to this week transaction. They're able to do a lot of things. Um, we've also gotten to a point where we've built an application for customers to pay to see their transactions, to even talk to us directly if they have any issue right from the app. We've you know integrated with USSD payments. We've integrated with banks. We've mm. done so many things within the space of two years wow. to be able to serve the two million customers that we have better. So Michael. Yeah, again, Isn't probably I'll just <laughs> paint a, a, a deeper picture. Okay. So, like you said, we started basic. So mm-hmm. we took it step by step because microtransactions is is wide. Two players um, are playing in that sector, both the merchant and the person paying, the customer paying. Mm-hmm. And nobody had done it before. So if you look at the other transactions, MasterCard, Visa have done the customer. So the customer has a MasterCard and Visa card. And the banks have provided POS for the merchant so they've done everybody had played a part mm. but in this whole space nobody had even done anything the merchant doesn't have anything the customer doesn't have anything so we had to play both the acquirer and the issuer okay. for, to really sort out that point so we started with the merchants we actually found a way to digitize them right so make okay. them comfortable that rather than um, get your revenue in cash you can get it digitized and we can assure you of revenue so your revenue is not lost due to leakages that's the first thing we had to do. And we started with transportation. And we started digitizing the bus operators. Upon completing that, we now focused on the customers. Like And like you said, what is that basic thing that the customer can use that has limited to no learning curve, right? Mm. So hence, we went to contactless. Even going to contactless, we had to make sure that's something that fits into our ecosystem, right? So contactless that people can pay very fast, very swift, can work both online and mostly offline, Okay. right? Moving beyond that now, we have now, that, I mean, that's like first to second phase. Now the third phase is both parties, like you said, again, they are enjoying the dividend of data. So from the merchant side, they are enjoying all oh, transactions, trends, pattern, they know oh, when to, where to deploy their buses, how to deploy their buses, mm. when, what every transaction they should be looking at. They can now project, they are using the data to get more buses in terms of loans and financing from yeah. institution. And on the match, sorry, on the customer side also, we're now working with them where we have schemes like customer now take over draft. So I can get on a bus, even if I don't have enough money, I can I can loan you, 
right? Yeah. Because I know your pattern, I know how often you travel, mm. and I can give you more money. So it has evolved from just a basic system to data now determining mm. the system, and it's going to evolve beyond transportation. Yeah. That's exactly what we are going to. So for both merchants and the customers, is that's where we are going to to make sure that they enjoy the dividend of data. Interesting, interesting. And I remember the last time we had, you know, yeah, the last time I spoke to you, um, you know, we're talking about we're speculating on what you know this thing could actually. <laughs> yeah. actually you touched, you've touched on that, and yes, I yeah. was like, you know, the financial inclusion we've yes, always been talking yes. about. This yeah. might just be the this might just be the way to yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know plug into that. Yeah. Yes, and you. I remember you know uh, you've touched on that a little bit, and and you know you were saying. Um, a driver cannot take a loan. Yes. He can <laughs> take a loan because we have data to show exactly. this is yes. how many rides he completes a day. This yes. is how much, how much they made. How yes. much he makes. Yes. And I think that's that's just that's just absolutely Maybe. absolutely fantastic fantastic. And I think we, we also uh, talked about um some other things such as insurance. I think I yes. brought up insurance. Yes. Insurance is I think is one is one thing that for some reason okay. For obvious reasons, that's eluded, you know, Nigeria, yes, Africa for yes, for yes. A, for a long time. Yeah. But I think with solutions like this, you know, the real deal mm. is if you are able to put sanity in that space mm. where people pay cash, everybody now comes to play in that space. Mm. So yesterday, I was just talking to him. I just we today, which would we'll, would we'll dive into, we we'll put sanity into payment for transportation, mm. right? Transactions that used to be cash based is now digital. And people are now enjoying it. Now we've been able to leverage on the data. Over someone that used the system for two months now can now have access to overdraft. Okay. Now customers themselves are now coming forward to say, where else can I use this card for payment? Right? Can I be on transportation? Can I use it to pay for things? Now we are entering travel. Now we are now in interstate. Now yes. the drivers are saying, I drive from Lagos to maybe three times a day or four times to fro. Wow. Right. Oh, I know that this bus has not made money yet in the morning. Can this bus leave the park and go and get fuel? And I'm able to talk to the fueling station and say, guy, this guy, before 12 o'clock, he would have made enough money to pay you. Give him fuel on credit. The commuters also now, they are not paying digitally. I'm telling them that, oh, if you are paying, just pay an extra token. Hmm. If anything happens to you, you are insured. But the only way everybody would have been able to, or would be comfortable playing in that sector is if it is digital and there's transparency on like what cash use. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, to touch a bit on the insurance question, um, you know, we, like I always say, Africans, we live on Viber and Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we really don't care about, yeah. you know, stuff like this mm. until things happen and we see how things go and we expect the government to take responsibility for everything. Um, however, um, some of the reasons are because of, you know, the way we are set up. Another reason is also because we're not so much enlightened. So what we have taken upon ourselves, just like uh, Michael have said, is that let's hide all this thing. Let's, let's make this a dividend of digitizing transaction. Yeah. So imagine you are supposed to pay 2,000 Naira and you pay your 2,000 Naira, but out of it, 15 Naira is actually for insurance. Mm -hmm. And that 15 Naira, we have figured out a way to partner with, you know, all the insurance companies in the world, in, in Nigeria, you know, we've paid them all this money and all that. And if anything happened to you, you don't really even need to know anything. You just see that your hospital bills, you know, have been catered, catered for, for and all that. And these are the value we sell to the, you know, um, stakeholders to say, you know what, when there is digitization, it comes with a lot of values. Yeah. Like loan that Michael mentioned, insurance is also a part of it. There are so many other things, uh, yeah. you know, accidents, group life insurance for the drivers. Mm -hmm. um, one of my friends, you know, did um, a CSR and went to, you know, the park to take the BP off some of these drivers. Some of them were clocking, you know, very high BPs and they don't, they have no clue. They don't I'm, know. I'm not even surprised. <laughs> <laughs> These are the people that we, you know, put our lives on yeah. day, daily. But, you know, with this whole ecosystem, um, coming together, we are able to have, you know, HMOs for them, where instead of them not having, like Michael mm. said, 8,000 Naira or 10,000 yeah. Naira to pay, you can take it from their daily revenue and, you know, pay the HMO such that they can have medical checkups, they can get, you know, all the care that they need and people are rest assured that their life is safe. Yeah. And 
Michael used to say something, said the roads are good, but the buses are still bad. Yes. <laughs> but how can the buses be good when nobody can see their transactions? Yeah. So when you're able to show a bank their transaction, mm. they're able to give them money to fix their buses or to change those buses. So those are some of the things that come into play. So insurance is a part of it, but it transcends insurance. There's so many other things I mean, that come into play. I mean, the real deal is you need to understand the transaction pattern for microtransactions. These people that do the transaction, they might not have, you expect them to say pay 10,000 euro for insurance or 20,000 euro. They don't have that money in bulk. But mm -hmm. they can pay you that money over a spread of say 10 days or 20 days as the case may be. Right? We are running a pilot with Magudo bus. Um, the entire Magudo also, we're going to close out all the small estates in, Leg in Lagos now where you can also use your car card, not mm -hmm. just getting off the PRT. And they were stuck because some of the drivers, so they need money to start the day, buy fuel and all those things, right? So if we give them a, a financial partner that we partner with, is ready to give them as much as 5,000 Naira. And they will be also paying 5,500 Naira per day in revenue, in return. They don't mind because during my revenue for the day, I can easily squeeze out 500 Naira and pay you. These are the kind of people that we are dealing with. Okay. And because before now, there was no data to their transaction. Nobody knows how they make their money. Their money is just made in their pockets. Mm. Now we're able to study that transaction pattern. Now we're able to show that data to relevant parties. And now everybody is now coming to that system. So, okay, yes, we can offer you value to take you out of that position that you are in. Interesting, interesting. All right, uh, we've talked a lot about, about um, finance and financial inclusion. And it seems like a very good time to plug in um, um, an event we have coming up uh, this November, um, the Tech Point Africa FinTech um, Summit. And I think a lot of these conversations will still um, rehash them in that in that event. We'll be talking a lot about um, you know, what exactly is the future of you know, FinTech in Africa? What is going on right now? What's the future? What are those opportunities that are uh, in um, finance you know, in, in Nigeria and Africa as a whole? Um, we'll leave a link to register for that event. You really need to be there if you care about um, finance and if you care you know, about leveraging opportunities that are existing in finance right now to better yourself better your family um it's coming up uh this november november this year november 26th and it's going to be an awesome one yeah thank you very much um so financial inclusion you know through touch, <laughs> through touch <happy. laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting one and i think the prospect is is really interesting and, but what I would just like to know now is, do we really have enough people using this payment service we've created? I mean, in Lagos, we have, what, 20 ahead? We have about 20 million people. Yeah. And, you know, a large percentage, I think almost 70% of these people use, um, use public transport. So do we have enough people that are using this this um, payment systems because I know we don't have it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't sit in every damn full bus. You yes, don't sit in so do we have you know enough people using this thing? Okay, yeah. Um, so Lagos is a metropolitan city, and um, we currently have um, government catching up to transportation. Hmm. Um, prior to this, we have um, the unions that have not that have now metamorphosized into Lagos State Park and Garage management that have been controlling a big part of the transportation sector in, in the state. Um, so what we have seen is we have worked very effectively with the government on the regulated bus schemes, um, the Borg bus reform initiative that is championed by LAMATA and okay. the Ministry of Transport, um, which gives us the power to have our equipment in whole regulated transport systems in Lagos. So meaning the first and last mile buses, the uh, BRT buses, high capacity and uh, okay. medium capacity, the ferry, um, the ferry, okay. and also the rail that is starting by the last quarter of the year. Um, so everybody, we have an intermodal mode of payment. It's going to be the carry system. However, um, we don't, because we care so much about the commuters and their experience, so we are not just focusing on that. We okay. have now done two things. The first thing is that we've done something we call carry danfo, where we also enable people to pay on Danfo, but yes, of course yes. with their carry card. But of course we cannot, you know, spread across just the same way we, with the power we have <laughs> in the state. So it's like a gradual process. Yeah. Then the second thing that we've done is um, we are working with um, 
the interstate people. So if you go to uh, uh, Yaba now, mm. the only means of payments. Well, okay. you you can pay with your you can pay with any means. You can pay with your um, bank card. You can pay with um, your carry card. You can pay with your carry app. Then you can Merchant still carry cash. They accept okay. every means. Every money yeah, through our platform. Through our platform. Okay. Then we are doing the same thing. We're going to be doing the same thing in Ojota, Ojota and Oshodi. In, Yes. as well and he will terminal as well so we have started exploring that and then we'll be doing something return as well so if you're coming from me but you go to LA, LA if you go to challenge we'll be using a uh, mode of payment to pay back mm-hmm. to you know lagos and then the last thing is just what michael touched on which was around um, um estates so we want to strategically put ourselves in the estate because when you have a means of payment to get somewhere and you want to continue your journey and that means of payment breaks, then it doesn't work as intended. So we want a scenario where you can use this same means of payment to continue your journey. So it's a gradual process. That career is just like two years now. <laughs> okay. um, uh, we feel that before the end of the year or before the first quarter of next year, we'll have a large chunk of people using it. And mm-hmm. we're not just in Lagos State. We are in Ogun State, we are in Oyo State. We are also launching in Kano, uh, Kano State, where we've equipped about, about 175 buses mm-hmm. already with our equipment. So, I mean, to really talk on this, transportation is a strategy for us. And I think you mentioned something earlier, which is we want to help people solve microtransaction problems. Okay. But we are very, very deliberate. We understand or we understood something earlier, which when we're doing our pilot was, yes, we want to solve the problem, but if you just don't identify a sector that you're solving the problem, you become an, an option. So imagine, yes, we want to solve the trans- uh, payment problem, payment, micro-payment problem digitally. You can do transportation, you can do merchant payments, you'll just be everywhere. Right. But we are acquiring our base customers through transportation. So that's the logic for us. And once the users have a primary use for your product, it's easy to tell that now carry is accepted here. Yeah. They now know I, the same way I tap, okay, I have my carry card, can I, you, can I allow you to, uh, can you allow mm. me to use it here? So that's the strategy for us. We are very, very deliberate on the use case uh, where the users can actually apply this technology that you have provided for them. So if you don't secure that for them, it just become an option and people will just say, oh yes, they know them, but I don't know where to use it, yeah. right? Okay. So transportation is a strategic sector, but we are also evolving into merchant payments. So across all the bus terminals now, you can now use your car to make a payment with the merchants there now. So it's one of the things that we're working on. So it is very, very strategic. So merchant payment is the next thing that we're actually evolving into. Okay, okay. Yeah, I still have um, a follow-up. I, I don't think <laughs> you've answered my question completely. <laughs> yeah, but before that, um, let me just, let's just take a word from, you know, the people that are being my <laughs> and also you. Hi, I'm Abisala Adenoga, the head of business at TechPoint Africa. Did you know that you could present yourself as a reputable brand leader? Did you know that your business can get the limelight it deserves? Now you do. Using TechPoint Africa's marketing tools, we can put you in the faces of a large audience for brand awareness and thought leadership. To do this, Reach out to us by sending an email to business at techpoint.africa or click on the link in the description below. All right, yeah, welcome back. Yes, I was before the break, I was grilling um, my two <laughs> guests about um, uh, what they do, um, you know, digitizing um, the transport business. You know, they've told us. Transportation is just, you know, a way they are using to, you know, get into. It's a strategic move um, to get, you know, people who are accustomed to that kind of payment system. Yes, but um, while you said, you know, you now have the carry buses, you know, the smaller ones that are not really the high capacity ones. Um, but I want to. Is there a plan to have? such payment systems in because i'm sure these yellow buses are still the most <laughs> yeah the most used um form of public transport, transport. Yes. So is there a plan to get this payment system in it can it work is it possible yeah it's very possible so there are two wings of the conversation so there is so if you want to sell payments in africa you can either come through the customers or you can come through the merchants um we see that in some sectors you can come through the merchant and you can compel every customer to pay 
through mm. this means. And in some other ways, you have to come through the customers. So for us, we have over 2 million carry users today in Lagos State. And we are saying that this is a number that is big enough for um, damn full customers to you know jump into the wagon and say, hey, I want these customers also. Because some of these people, they don't have the first and last mile um, to convey them from the highway back to their home. They have to rely on damn fools. Okay. So we are telling them that, hey guys, we don't want these people to have to go and withdraw cash because they already digitized their cash on their carry card when you know they were topping up. We want you to be able to accept it. But you know, it has not been so easy making them accept the digital pins because of their own working model. Their model is a bit different from the regulated ones where you can have one downfall that is mm. operated by five different people. <laughs> the person that drives the downfall Monday. money is not the person that drives in the afternoon. Yeah. And those two set of people are not the ones that will drive it the next day. So it's very difficult to you know think about settlement, to do all, all those things. So while we are trying to you know, put some sanity into that space. One of the things that we've been able to do is to still allow the commuters still pay. So we put an agent mm -hmm. there that the commuter can tap with and the agent can aggregate the payment and pay the um, downfall drivers so that they can continue on their journey. So that's what we are doing right now. But um, as soon as we are able to bring them into the fold, I mean the operators, um, the downfall drivers and all that, and figure out a way to transform their model, we will be able to you know, deploy to them in mass. So I think, I mean, I couldn't have put it any better. It's a very, very strategic, just like the, he explained the challenges. So what we have done is not to neglect it, so we are partnering with agents, uh, agency banking people and the like, so, so that um, people can identify. So we've started the pilot really in Oshodi. We yeah. went to the heart and we faced it. Mm. It's going to fail to fail at Oshodi. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't get any crazier than yeah. Oshodi, right? So people are highlighting from the terminal, right? Mm. They are going to Lupeju, they are going to Onyibo, they are going to Yaba. You can highlight from the bus. There's an agent there. You tap with the agent, the agent aggregates the money. And actually pays the driver, and this is getting good traction, yeah. so to speak. We um, have about over a million yes uh, usage in a month. Yes, exactly. And the value in that is you'll be surprised where the drivers are facing their own daily challenges. No change. Uh, the money mm -hmm. you are bringing is very early in the morning, so they just redirect those people and say, "If you have your car, I just got up. I will get my money from him." Right. Okay. And in doing this in a little, we are now digitizing drivers. We understand their transactions. So now. If I get those data, it's easy to help those drivers from every perspective, from finance, financing to every other Interesting. thing. Interesting. Yes. So you don't, basically, it's it's not working exactly the same way it works with exactly. business, yes. like, but you're still... Digitizing the payments. <laughs> Interesting. So it would be interesting you know, to talk about... Um, you know, numbers, right? Okay. <laughs> you are saying, and if we are calling 1 million customers, 2 million customers, so it would be interesting to know, you know, what you know, in terms of um, revenue and you know, things Thank like you. that. <laughs> okay, so um, currently we have over 2 million customers okay. and we have about 400,000 active daily. Yeah. Um, you know, people that use the system every day, they are about 400,000. Um, on... In terms of revenue, how, how much is how much do we have in dollars? Uh well, there are some numbers that we'll still keep under the lead. <laughs> <laughs> but we would rather look at the transaction mm. of the numbers from the general number. Just like you mentioned, we have mm. over two million customers every okay. day. Um, we have over four hundred thousand people using it day actively okay. every every day. Mm. Uh, we've actually started um, different sectors beyond intra city payment mm. for transportation. Mm. We've started intercity. Also, that's also gaining very much traction. Um, yeah. We've processed over uh, almost a million transactions in the last month. Then beyond interest city, we're also doing merchant payments also. So we've actually launched some merchant payments in the craziest of places. So we're not doing merchant payments in a conventional place. We're mm. piloting in the craziest of places. So in the entire we should determine now today, um, if you want to use the restroom, before the ACP cash, she can just have your card to pay. Mm. So those are the kind of, we are not going for the... You <laughs> You yeah, are making rest room money. <laughs> we are going for the everyday person. So we are getting data. We are learning mm -hmm. their their usage. You are following their lifestyle usage. So mm -hmm. um, where else are you, do you want to use it? So what are the things that the customers want to use? Those are the things that inform the growth pattern that we are we are involved in. Okay. So um, that's really interesting. And 
let's let's now move to you know um the more you know you said transport is just a strategy right this thing you are you're looking forward to a time where it's you know moves into other sectors yeah especially um you're maintaining micro transactions right yeah. okay so let's now imagine you know you want to go into other forms of not just transport other sectors right yeah how will this how will this work okay for me i, I i'm already skeptical because for i know in brazil buses we have this this machine where <laughs> it I, yes it's simple it's simple you yeah. know like you said it's mm. offline that mm. makes sense but then if i want to buy gala i want to do these things yeah does that mean the, me- the <laughs> merchant selling the gala needs to have this okay huge machines with them who who, who funds you know them getting these things how, how do you think it will work okay so interestingly, I brought this device. <laughs> I didn't even. Oh. Know. I mean, it just <laughs> it just found away in my pocket. Oh, okay. Um, so, the device that the merchant needs is something as you know simple as this, right? That we're going to provide for the merchant, or we, or they can buy, or they can you know just use their phone. Okay. Provided they have um, a contactless, contactless um, device. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And they can use that to do any form of transaction. Mm. And you know, like you see, this is very handy. It, it can fit into their pockets. They can do anything with it. They can see all that okay. you know, end of the day transactions. So really, where we are really going is a scenario where um, we can digitize people at the point of their need, and we can you know financially include the excluded. And some of these merchants, we can then show their transactions hmm. to the people. Um, like we said, transport, transportation for us is a means to an end. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the truth is that microtransactions are in every places yeah. so there's the even, even the banks they do something they call utility card okay. where they envisage that you want to buy fuel you want to buy your hair you want to, pay, you for want to pay for toll gates mm-hmm. you want to um pay for your car to be washed these are you know utility, utility transactions. transactions okay your gas in your house is finished, finished. you want to refill it utility transactions so we feel that if we can yeah. aggregate these transactions yeah. we can you know make it like can be a, king in that space exactly so we then we can then create like a subscription model around it so imagine i know that you buy every two weeks and i've aggregated all your barbies alone and i say okay pay twenty thousand naira for the year and then you can go to any, you can go to any barbie salon to barbie your hair within this range and it's done so basically that's the way we think about you know utility transactions in disrupting you know this uh, ecosystem and also providing um, a cashless environment. So we people that perform utility transactions are not just, you know, bottom of the pyramid. There are people like yeah. you and I yeah. that then have to go and kill to a, with the ATM and withdraw cash to, to do them. To the so that's the way we are thinking about it. I mean, uh, the second perspective is, you know, I mentioned earlier that microtransactions we have we are the ones having to do the hard work, digitizing both the customer and the merchant, mm. and. It extends, just like you mentioned, extends to different sectors. So today, if you go to any government hospital, you see pay cash. If you, today, while we're in school, um, you, your parents will give you cash because you're going to go to the talk shop to buy stuff at yeah. breaks, right? All these transactions, can we digitize them, right? Today, if any donor organization comes to Nigeria today, right, and they want to give money to the people, they still do it with cash. And like, like they take cash to the villages because these guys don't have bank accounts. So these are places where we would actually get into uh, we are digitizing their transactions so imagine you have a school um all the school student id card is now a payment card contactless payment card right now and you are now oh, as your parents just fund their cards and you can use it to make payment even if you don't have enough money right you can actually still get a facility and you can use it to pay i don't need to power the facility but if i show the transaction history we have a lot of financial uh, companies right now they can find a, and they can find a, a facilitate the transaction Mm. So just like you mentioned, utility transactions is one of the things that we're looking at. Everyday transactions that people pay cash to do, both from the merchant side and the commuter side, um, um, customer side rather, digitizing that space, providing a simple technology for them to use um, to process the transactions. We're joking about something recently. I said, we're digitizing payments in my, um, transportation and realize that we are currently, I think, the largest pay- uh, processor for, micro, uh, for contactless transactions in West Africa, maybe Africa. Because the volume of contactless transactions that we do every day, I don't think anybody comes close to it. And it's just not about the technology. That technology just makes it easier. So if tomorrow is going to be a QR code scanning, it's 
whatever it is to digitize that space so that people don't need to worry about carrying cash. Hmm. Travel to Abuja today. If you do all the extra thank you, <laughs> twenty k, you are not going to leave the airport <laughs> after you maybe book boat. If you are going to do anything, yes, yes, you're stranded. So we want to change that mentality. So if I have something digital and I know that this much and accept it, I'm going to be fine. Okay, okay, yeah, interesting. So um, I know um, you know contactless payments. You know you've said a lot about it. It sounds sounds very futuristic. It sounds sounds interesting, right? Uh, but I think bank cards. I think I've asked this questions so before. Yeah. I can't remember the answer I gave, but let me ask it again. Yeah. <laughs> bank cards also have contactless. This, yes, these yeah. um, capabilities. So why do I? Why it's will I always need card. a so carry card? Gonna, he's going to show you this, but the real idea, um, while he's setting up something mm. to show you, is nobody has really provided a use case for this. So yes, technology can be fantastic. Uh, for, if you remember the days where you have smartphones and they, they, there was no Play Store to download apps. Yes, why the phone had 8 gig gram and dislikes and mm. we, had, we used to have memory cards there that phone that used to have memory cards. But there was no use case, all right, to put yeah. it into use. But all of a sudden, you have cameras right now that you have to use one terabyte memory card because there's a specific use case for it. So there's, there was, there had been no use case to drive those technologies. Yes, the bank cards are compliant to contactless transactions, but where can you use it? The places that the banks have provided, I would rather insert my chip inside it in the POS and use it. But if I say that, oh, you can quickly use it for this microtransaction and tap to pay because someone is empowering that merchant. Yeah. That is the real idea. So we are coming in to say that technology, mm. right, let's make it compliant. So now the banks have helped us solve the problem of the customer, right? They've Now most customers have bankers are contactless. How can we now help the merchant collect or assure, assure his revenue? Yeah. So payment is not a technology problem really. Yeah. It's a social problem. We are just using yes. technology. That's where we that's we'll see it. <laughs> that's an interesting take. And and honestly, that's why if you go to a store behind your house or beside your house that you have a relationship with, and you tell them that who oh, will give me one bowl of curry mm. and one bowl of rice or something, and you say, Oh, I'll pay you tomorrow, the woman will let you go, probably. Because they know you, they trust you. There's a social... Uh, there's like an interaction, right? Construct, yeah. And you've taken value and you've not really paid. Yeah. And somebody trusts you enough. And the whole concept of Bitcoin, you know, is built on you know, <laughs> this whole thing. That it was a system, there's a system of trust in place for this thing. So, and that's from the perspective that we think about payments. Not, who oh, it has to be contactless, it has to be this technology, yeah. it has to be that technology. It's how it facilitates trust. Exactly. exactly. And, you know, one, one of the reasons why um, the POS or whatever has not really gained traction in, at the bottom of the pyramid is also because of um, the way people perceive it. Yes. If you change that entire mindset, mindset you know, adoption will start. Will skyrocket. A typical example is when um, Uber came into the world. What was your first take? We're like, nobody's going to use this. This is dumbest idea. Our Airbnb. So in the world where there are serial killers, where there are kidnappers, yeah, I'm going to insert someone's car or someone's house that I don't know. And then, but you know, this brand, they invested a lot of money in social creating social a system of trust and yeah. they disrupted that market. Mm. And that's the perspective that we are coming from when we are solving payment problem. So we don't look at the technology per se. We yeah. look at, you know, providing something that somebody can take home and say, oh, I this person us. have said my payment is intact. <laughs> and yes. that and then I can go. Even if it fails, I know that I can hold it responsible. I'll exactly. Buy. And I'll get my cash. So if you look at this now, um, this is a bank card. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to do this more demo. MasterCard. And I'll say proceed. Once I tap this card, mm -hmm. if I enter my PIN, let me enter my PIN. Um, it's going to debit. You entered your PIN on camera. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> card. Right. so i mean it's it's exhibited by account with that yes. and this is a bank card right mm. and this is our application so okay. a contactless transaction mm. had, had happened and the merchant is going to get value mm. i'm also going to yes, get right. debited and all that so for us we're not looking at this from oh it has to be our card right. it has to be our it's just to facilitate transaction so that somebody can pay five naira digitally somebody can pay two naira yeah. digitally and 
both people can get settled. I mean, the merchant can get yeah. settled. The payment process, so everybody yeah. can, you know, can can be I fine. Mean, the the bank is not going to build. The banks are not going to always build unique platforms for each merchant to collect payments, right? Mm. Uh, so someone has to actually go down the last mile to actually allow them build something for them to collect their payments and now digitize them. Once you digitize it, everybody is now after you. Uh, bring the money to my bank, bring money to my bank. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me provide insurance. <laughs> let me just to provide financial loan. Everybody's going to be coming at it because you've solved that initial problem. Interesting. Interesting one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think um, this now brings me to my next question, which is, um, you know, you said payment is not a technological problem. It's yes. a social problem. So um, in, in, uh, in Africa, generally, uh, whatever solution we are bringing, um, there's always a, like you said, it's a social problem. So <laughs> I'm sure there are some, you've solved to an extent this, you know, trust issue, but I'm sure there are other challenges that you face, you know, for someone in the payment you know, um, system of things, what would you say are those challenges that are facing payments in Nigeria right now. What what are those payment challenges that we have? So, if I probably will go first, um, I think I would use that word social. That social problem, that social barrier, is a major, major um, bane for technology providers. When we started, it was very, very crazy. It was as crazy as when people tap their card on the validators and the bosses, they say that it is using your blood. Because <laughs> 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 they don't understand the concept of I have a plastic card that I'm tapping and the thing is not using internet. I'm looking at it, they don't understand. And these are the people that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And they will say, so someone would literally pass the card, I don't, I don't want to tap shit. <laughs> <laughs> your technology is not broken, but people it. are not using it. Mm -hmm. And you have to break that barrier. Like, constantly educate them, constantly tell them that oh, this thing is not crazy. This thing would work, right? And bringing them be beyond that, right, to places where you get complaints, oh, this thing, your technology failed or something. And you realize that they are the ones, if I if we show you a video of how people use the interactive system, really. so in, in probably different, our own perception is one person taps on the bus, goes on, person. That's not how people interact with their validators. Mm. There are about five people trying to tap at the same time. Do you understand? And so Shocking if you don't bus. figure out that social com, um, construct, um, it, it creates a barrier. We're also talking, so we have cards and we have mobile app. So you can also download the carrier app. And we, we did a sample and realized that we, were, we saw through data, the usage of the app was always in the afternoon. And the use of the card was constantly in the morning. And mm. we, we took people in the morning and said, okay, guys, why why are you not using the card? It's already the app. You have the card, you have the app. <laughs> the, the guy called us and said, in the morning, as the could the way about 200, 200, I mean, 2,000 people are trying to get on the bus. Mm. <laughs> you, you, you are trying to scan them. <laughs> <laughs> you just be like, oh God, oh my God, let me go. <laughs> so your technology is not broken, mm -hmm. right? If you don't solve that social problem where people get accepted, create acceptance and use your system and feel, feel very comfortable. That's the number one thing that you need to solve in my own, um, what we've learned, in fact, if I were to summarize it that way. Mm. Yeah, so you really need to domesticate, yeah. domesticate technology to people's um, Reality. realities for it to be adopted. And if you see all the payment systems that have worked around the world, you see that that's how it happened. Mm. When WeChat Pay came, you know, it, it um, thrived on the fact that Chinese are trying to send money home during festivals. And, you know, they, they, they leveraged on that to drive adoption. Um, so everywhere in the world, any payment system that have really worked or survived, it has thrived on the reality, the tradition of the people. And that's one of the reasons why, um, even if you see the governor's interview, he's always saying that the reason why they went with carry was because it was locally built. So we are not trying to conform the people to our technology. Yeah. Rather, we are conforming our technology Should to the be. realities of the people. And that's one of the confidence that we have that in this market, we are going to win. So, um, and also beyond that, um, we believe that business is like a cobweb of relationships with people. And people are probably not going to listen to you if they don't know where you are from, they don't know who you are, they don't know what you've done really well and all that. So. 
we've decided to roll our sleeves and do the hard work of building relationship with all the stakeholders in the sector that we decide to focus on and let them know us, let them see, we, let us add value to them. Mm-hmm. An example is um, when there's a lot of construction happening in Yaba where they, they are to disrupt the bus operators that are loading around that place. We took upon, our, upon ourselves to bring them into a well-regulated terminal. You know, we kind of stick our neck out for them to say no. These guys can be disrupted. And, you know, we do all that. We go the extra mile to invest in that kind of relationship so that by the time we bring our values to them, it's not going to come from the stick of, from an outsider. It's going to come from, these are the people we know. These are our people. And then they can trust us. They can tell us their pain point. And then we can then solve it for them. So that's how we look at business, (laughs) payments, and everything that we do generally. It's easy for you, for that person to accept your payment technology. Even if it's even if it's raining and whatever thing happens to your technology is and don't worry to work. It's yeah. easy for that person now become your advocate and convince customers or commenters to use your system. Hmm. Interesting one. Yes. And and I think uh, I'm going to ask a question what I think I should have you know, asked earlier. You know, you said uh, someone someone didn't want to use <laughs> the technology. Yeah. You know, because it thought it was <laughs> sucking their blood yes. or, or something like that. So I, I must I can only imagine, you know, when you first started, you know, using this thing, what was the reaction? How how did people even get to learn, you know, to use it to use it properly? So sensitization. So Constant. we we you know it's easy for you to be in your home and just assume that this is a no brainer yeah. because of your level of exposure. You mm-hmm. automatically think everybody have that same level of exposure. And uh, just load your card, tap it, and go. Mm. How hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> Until when we start seeing all forms of crazy people. So, an, ex- an example is um, without announcing, we decided to launch an experiment, the overdraft that Michael spoke about okay. earlier. Somebody, and then so once you tap and you don't have enough fund, it runs into negative until the next time you top up, then it credits you back. And somebody called and said, I'm a Muslim. You cannot be giving me loan that I don't <laughs> I don't demand. You know that you don't have money on your card. <laughs> you still went to tap. You still went to tap. So you people should have bounced me instead of letting me go. Wow. And you know, and so these are some of the interesting things that hmm. so but sensitization is one of the things, tools that you know we've now started using constantly. very constantly. So we do village meetings with the stakeholders in collaboration with the authority Lamata. We um also print flyers and paste yes. everywhere. We go on a Twitter space, yeah. we do Instagram live, we do all from all sorts of sensitization just to, you know, carry, be at the, carry, carry people along, along, be at yeah. the top of their mind and let them understand that, hey, this is how this thing works. Some yeah. of them frequently ask questions, we post it online, you know, we discuss it. We did radio yes. last year, I think we did TV this year. Yeah. Just to, you know. I, I mean, just to add to it, we also, we, we had to, we, one of the things that we also had to do was learn very, very fast. Mm. So sensitization was one of the major things that we had to learn and evolve very fast. So, I mean, we are of the, this new generation where we are all technical. And we're, we're, I mean, we started sensitization on Instagram. And we're like, <laughs> no, guy, Facebook. Um, we have to do go back to the local prints, mm. print yeah. poster, print banners, print flyers. We had to go to the grassroots, LTV, all those other dancing, 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 dancing that tap it down. <laughs> did you dance? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like that. Did you? I did <laughs> we, okay. had we had to all the learning, learning, learning your customer, understanding mm. your customer is very, very essential in this sector. Interesting, interesting. So, um. My final question, uh, I think, you know, it has it has really been an interesting conversation <laughs> so far. So my final question is now, um, where 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 do you think could you paint a picture of where this is going for people? How you know, I'm sure this you know when you compare, you know, I can't compare Nigeria to the UK, for example. Mm. But um, when you think about the circumstances of where we are now in Africa and Nigeria, I think this is. This is, you know, this is a level of innovation, right? Yeah, yeah but I'm sure there's still more to come. Yeah. There's still, yeah. you know, a lot that will happen. So can you paint a picture for us? Like, what would this look like, you know? So several years ago, years? I think um, Hong Kong launched something like this. They call it the Octopus Card. Mm. Now, there's a joke in Hong Kong that says that the Octopus Card is the last innovation in Hong Kong mm. because people use it for everything. 
people now use it. It started as a transportation, just like this transportation card system, and it evolved into merchant payments where people use the octopus card to pay for anything. In fact, it got acquired by a bank in um, Hong Kong. Now, people use it to open the doors of their house. Hotels. Hotels. They use it for it, the octopus card. So, people that say, you know, this is like the last innovation because <laughs> it has metamorphosized into the lifestyle of the people. They use it for gym membership. They use it to open hotel doors. They use it to open their home door. They use it for payment and everything. And all you just have to carry in Hong Kong now is your octopus card. So, we imagine the same thing in Africa where we have... Um, our utility card, I mean, the calorie card, has a lifestyle card where, or a lifestyle payment instrument. It doesn't have to even be a card. Okay. Where once you have the app on your hard card, you can just go anywhere. You can move money back and forth into your bank. You can do your shopping. You can pay for transportation. You can do a lot of things. But what is more important to us is learning that data, learning that pattern such that you can never be stranded whenever you pay with carry in the sense that who oh, we know that this person this is their person's lifestyle this is this person's transaction and let's say for whatever reason you don't have enough money to leave your house to go and hustle to go and do your business i mean you can get that money up front and when you hustle and do your business you can pay back we can take back our money so we want to be ingrained into people's life not with the intention of stalking you or data privacy, <laughs> but to be able to improve your life, to be able to make people's life, you know, very, very much easier, to be able to bring the benefit of the government, the benefit of financial inclusion, the benefit of, you know, having a truly digital society. So, I can. Yeah. So, uh, I'll just add to it, which is the same problem that we're having in Nigeria, the same problem Ghana is having, the same problem Kenya is having in taking transportation as, as a sample space. And that sector, if you travel to any of these countries, it's still cash-based. We are traveling within the country or traveling outside the country. We don't have, uh, sorry, within the city or outside the inter- intercity. If you don't have cash, you can't travel. They don't even accept them, Pesa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's so just been, in been to, Yes, in Kenya. So we've been to Kenya, we've been to Ghana, we've been to Senegal. Senegal yeah. So oh, cash. micro payments, which is cash paid, is a huge problem. Over 250 million Africans, Africans every day pay cash. That's the data that we have. So imagine even if it's $1 that they are paying in cash, that's mm-hmm. $250 million exchanges hands between merchants every day. That's it. That's assuming wow. that they do one payment. Mm-hmm. So imagine you now do $1 payment five times a day. That's about a billion dollars exchanging hands every, every day, day in cash. Mm-hmm. In so cash. what we have done in Nigeria is applicable to almost every part of Africa and mm-hmm. can be replicated. And we can use this model to solve it. And the benefit that comes from it is we, had, we did a pilot in Oshodi here. And they use um, cash to collect revenue, revenue collection. And we did a pilot and said, we can use our cards to collect revenue. And people paid with the cash. And the the local government told the some of the participants they, as the yeah, some of the benefits that they are supposed to enjoy, which is now that I know that you are the one paying. Before, there used to be a tax consultant that you pay cash and just has tickets for you and leaves. But now I'm tapping a card. And I know that it's Olamdi that paid, it's Bolu that paid this actual uh, payment. Now I can now tailor directly to you because I've seen you pay for the past three months. So if your child now goes to a primary healthcare center, they can now get a discount because I know that you are the one that paid. So that's now the benefits that, so it's not beyond just payments. Okay. So it's now the benefits of the data that comes into payment. Interesting. Micro space. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's, <laughs> like I said, that's been an interesting <laughs> conversation so far. Thanks and, fine. you know, um, you mentioned something about privacy, but we're out of time. I will have. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you're watching us on YouTube, watching us on, Inst- you are seeing clips of this on Instagram, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, anywhere, you can just comment, like, um, let me know what you feel about this. If there's any other question you wanted me to ask them that I didn't ask, I'm sure I will find a way to <laughs> drag them back here <laughs> and ask ask those um, questions. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please take you know, a few minutes to just like this, subscribe, um, share with your neighbor, share with your friend, first share with your daddy, your mom, <laughs> your enemies, share with everyone yeah, you know. And uh, anyway, you're watching this, Simply just yeah. Um, TikTok. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we see your um your engagements. You know, uh, we see your feedback. Um, and for everyone else on every other social network, uh, big thank you. 
So if you are listening to us on um, podcast platforms, um, if you are listening on, you can always find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, High Art Radio, or anywhere else you get your podcast. I didn't say this the way I usually say it, but that's fine. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So my name is Bolu, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.